Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. <laughs> Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 128, uh, Christ is Alive. Please stand as you're able. Again, it's great to see everyone this morning in person and on Zoom. So welcome, everybody. Our service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page two of your bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south of the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. 
This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip about they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 22 can be found on page 612 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 3 of your order of service. Let's read responsibly. My praises of him in the great assembly. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. For kingship belongs to the Lord. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn. The second reading today is from John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. 
and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as a Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters or liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> redeeming work is done, fought the fight, the battle won. Death in vain for did him rise, Christ has opened paradise. This again a glorious King, where, O oh, death, is now thy sting. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. From our gospel this morning, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone uh, here in person again, face to face. It, it's amazing I don't have to preach just to the cameras. Now I get to preach to lots of different areas. And again, it's great to have people on Zoom. Those uh, in the, uh, um, in the uh, congregation here, our second lesson obviously was read from Zoom, 
That was the voice from above. It wasn't God. Uh, <laughs> but what a great way to kind of make sure that those congregations, both congregations, the Zoom congregation and us here, worship together. And I love the fact that we're back in the church today for the first time, and we have these readings on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We're still celebrating this Easter season. We gathered outside together on Easter Day, and now we gather as we walk through this 50 days of Easter. And we hear these stories as we gather again about the Christian life. And I love how all of our readings today kind of, they're, they're, they don't fit together in the same theme, but it's all about living the Christian life. The one we heard from inside here, uh, from uh, the voice above, from the Gospel of John, talks about, not from the Gospel of John, from 1 John, talks about that love of God and the importance that we know that love of God and that we share that love of God. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Reminds me of our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, he keeps saying, if it's not about love, it's not about God. What an amazing statement. If it's not about love, then it's not about God. Maybe he took it from this uh, first reading of John, uh, first letter of John, because again, that's John's theme, that we are to abide in God's love, that it starts with God's love, and we love because we have been loved by God. Now, I know this is nothing new to us as Christians. We hear this over and over, don't we? But the question is, is do we hold on to that? And we do, do we know what that really looks like out into the world? The writer of 1 John goes, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. So what does it mean for us to abide in God's love? Another way of saying it, uh, the message version of the Bible says, to make your home in it. To make your home in God's love. And if you want to know what God's, lo God's love looks like, all you have to do is look at that first reading, the one from the Acts of the Apostles. We've heard the Acts of the Apostles from Easter, and we'll hear it all the way through these 50 days of Easter. We've set our Old Testament readings aside. And we hear of the earliest church and them forming a community and what that looked like. And today we hear about Philip sharing God's love to an outsider. We hear of the Ethiopian eunuch on his way back from worshiping in Jerusalem. What's interesting is this Ethiopian eunuch would not have been able to be in the temple because he's Ethiopian and he was a eunuch. He was an outsider, but he still came to worship. And as he's traveling home on this wilderness road, on a very rough road, a very dangerous road, God calls to Philip and says, go meet him on the road from Jerusalem to Gaza. And Philip follows. And Philip hears the word being proclaimed from inside this chariot. And so he gets on and says, do you understand what you're reading? Of course, the Ethiopian eunuch says, how can I if nobody explains? And so Philip, to an outsider, explains this message of Jesus Christ. Explains that Isaiah was speaking of one to come, the one we know, the Messiah, as Jesus Christ. And they journey together, and then the Ethiopian eunuch sees the water and says, hey, there's water. What, what keeps me from being baptized? <laughs> Well, according to the laws back then, just about everything did. But God, God's love prevailed. Philip, Philip knew God's love. He abided in that love, and he baptizes this Ethiopian eunuch. What an amazing way to abide in God's love, to reach out to those who are outsiders and say, hey, or those who we call outsiders, and say, hey, you are not an outsider. God put his arms upon that cross for you as much as for me. So Philip abides in that love. 
And we hear these stories over and over again throughout the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And as we journey on our spiritual lives, then we get to our gospel today, the gospel of John. And that, that wonderful imagery of branches and the vine and bearing good fruit. Like to, I like to think that Philip definitely bared good fruit when he reached out to that eunuch. The question is, how are we going to bear good fruit? In what ways are we as Christians, we as members of Christ's Episcopal Church, but also we as Christ's Episcopal Church, how are we going to bear good fruit? Jesus also goes on to say that sometimes you have to be pruned. There needs to be a little pruning to, to make sure we're bearing good fruit. I never quite understood this the way I do now after living in Brigham City. My first congregation out of seminary at St. Michael's Episcopal Church in Brigham City, they had a vicarage. I was the, the, the vicar there. It was a mission congregation. And right next to the church, much like here, was the house that I lived in. And it had grapevines in it. First year, didn't produce much of anything. So I talked to my junior warden. I'm like, those, those look nice, but there are not many grapes. He's like, well, didn't you cut it back? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm a kid from New Mexico. We don't raise grapes in New Mexico. And he shared with me the fact that you want to cut them back. You want to prune them. And that the grapes grow on the new vines, on the new wood, if you will. And so after that, we had a lot more grapes the following years. What is it that we have to prune back to make sure that we are bearing good fruit? And what does good fruit look like for us? <laughs> We've had a lot pruned back this last 13, 14 months, haven't we? March 8th, the second Sunday of Lent, was the last time we were in here as a congregation. And now we're back. And we had to prune some things away, didn't we? And now we're ready for that new growth. Now we're ready to bear new fruit. We've already been bearing great fruits over this last eight, 14 months. But now it's time to ask God, what of that that has been pruned, what do we want to lay aside? And what also needs to be pruned off so that we might bear good fruit, both individually and corporately? So today as we celebrate, today as we see each other face to face as well as on Zoom, as we enter this hybrid season, what do we need to prune away? What do we want to graft together to make sure that we are the body of Christ, that we are sharing God's love, we are abiding in God's love, that we are going out and reaching those who are seen as outsiders, those who might not know of God's love? And how for us, for our own spirituality, how do we need to be pruned in a way that we bear good fruit? So today may we celebrate. But today may we also ask ourselves, are we truly abiding in God's love? And if not, what's in our way of doing that? In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed found on page 5 of your bulletin or page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3, are found on page 5 of your bulletin or page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. Today, we lift up all those we know and love but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Steve Lewis, Jan P, Arlene, Megan and the Coltiska family, Jen and family, Baby Violet, Michael C, Michael L, Irene, Christy, Leslie, Lawrence M, Dave and Judy, Josh S, Mary P, David C, Debbie and family, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners and those in nursing facilities. Today we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, those who have died, those who are sick, those in quarantine and their families. We pray for continued moisture during this time of drought in Colorado and the West. And today we especially pray for our country. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. We pray for understanding. And we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, and political division that continues to infect and divide this country. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Megan Koltiska, Audrina Prenz, and Edith Wilkin. As well as those who have anniversaries this week, Michael and Glenda Conroy, Mark and Edith Wilkin, Water, Walter and Karen Kowalski, Lloyd and Susan Patterson. Today's altar flowers have been given by Ma Michael Chawinski in loving memory of his mother, Elsie, <coughs> and his daughter, Erica Starr. Mm -hmm. 
Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone. I invite you to look at the others around you and share God's peace. And on Zoom, God's peace to everybody there. <laughs> all right. You may be seated. Well, again, just a couple uh, uh, quick announcements. Um, First of all, welcome everybody. It's great to have, have everybody here in, in the sanctuary and also on Zoom. Um, first um, item of business is, is with communion. For those on Zoom who have picked up the pre-consecrated communion kits, we invite you to share communion with us after the, or at that time. After the service, myself or Chris will be out on 4th Street for drive-by uh, communion. And for those here, uh, we'll have communion. We're still going to use the communion cups. And so what I'll do is the ushers will come and invite you to come forward. You can receive the cups. Um, and then if you'll go back to your seat and receive communion at your seat, obviously you can take your masks off to receive communion. And then in the back um, of the sanctuary, there's um, as, you in, as you leave, we're asking everyone to exit through the uh, uh, north door here. And there's a, a little basket there like we had outside. And you can put your communion cups there and we'll clean those and uh, get them recycled and everything. So just a few items about communion. Um, then also um, with the offertory, uh, we're not going to be passing the plates. The offertory will be brought uh, forward. The plates are in the back there. If you have your check with you and you didn't see it there, and didn't, um, there'll be a, a plate after the service, and you can do that. And then obviously for online, uh, we have all of our original ways of doing uh, the offertory. There's also some Easter lilies in the back. I think there's like five or six of them. If you'd like to take one home and uh, give it a good home uh, uh, planet and everything, please do. If you're on Zoom and want one of those, when you drive up for communion, we'll make sure you get one as well. But I think there's about five of the Easter lilies left. So please give those a good home. As we start to gather in person again, we are looking for greeters. The greeter team will be uh, is already re-engaged and will be um, looking for more greeters. If you're interested, you can talk to Bill Lee in the nice salmon shirt. He's nice and bright today. So uh, you can talk to Bill or email myself. We also are looking for people for the video team and sound team. So back with Frank and Christy, it's really cool. Um, there's, when I learned it, I'm like, ooh, I wanna stay back here. You guys can preach. I wanna do the fun cameras. But again, we are looking for volunteers there. So if that seems to uh, be up your alley, uh, see myself or Frank, and we'll get uh, volunteers for that as well. If there's any other announcements that need to be shared, please email them to myself or to Ash, and we'll get them out on the uh, uh, Wednesday and Friday emails and everything. So again, it is great to see your all's uh, smiling faces. <laughs> I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. This bread is my body broken for you. This cup is my blood of the Oh. 
Please stand as you are able. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy known have we given thee. Now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 7 of your bulletin, or page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. At this time, I invite those who are on Zoom to receive the pre-consecrated communion and everyone here can be seated and then the ushers will uh, bring you forward.
please stand as you are able. Now let us close with the post-communion prayer found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.